Hello Survivors, and welcome to the first Versus series episode of 2024. Today we have some incredible contestants from the mod community. First, one of my favorite mid-sized theropods in the game, Arc Edition's own Ceratosaurus, one of the best land travel dinos. A dino that was actually chosen by you for this video goes up against Tristan's Eocarcaria, a newer pack creature on the Arc Ascended mod shop that loves mushrooms. We got a big one today, as these two creatures have a lot of abilities and quirks. So buckle up, grab a drink, and let's see which creature reigns supreme among the mid-tier dinos. We're gonna test them in 7 categories. Creature design, ease of tame, speed, tankiness, damage, special abilities, and utility. Both of these creatures are available on both PC and console, so both communities can enjoy them. Honestly, I'm surprised the Serato was chosen for this video, since the Allosaurus had a lot more in common with the Eocarcaria, and it would've made an interesting comparison as well. By the way, this wall at the back, a huge painting was supposed to be there, made by yours truly. But of course I lost all my work thanks to a crash. Thanks Wildcard. At least fix the damn hit registration issues, if you cannot fix the crashing. Anyways, I got sidetracked. Let's see what today's contestants bring to the table. But before that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons, and maybe even become a member of the channel. You will get access to some cool emojis and badges, and you will get early access to all of my future videos. And you will get a shout out at the end of my videos so that everyone can see how awesome you are. Okay, let's start off with creature design. First, the Ceratosaurus. If you've been following the channel for the past year, you might know that I absolutely love this dino. It has an awesome looking model with very smooth animations and great sound design. Thanks to the horns, spikes and the color pattern, and of course the roar, god I love this roar, the Serato is one of the creatures that can strike fear in the heart of any survivor, especially in the early game. Garuga simply doesn't pull any punches when it comes to his mod creatures. The man is a beast, just like the Serato. In the other corner we have a new challenger, the Eocarcaria. First thing that strikes me, this thing is a little bit bigger. It has a cool looking osteoderm on its head and some spikes on its tail, similar to the Ceratosaurus, but I have to say it doesn't look nearly as terrifying as the Cerato. Its animations are alright, I love the spin animation, but the attack animation looks like it's a bit too long, which might affect the creature. The roar is okay, it's loud, and similar to the Allo, all pack members roar at the same time. Unfortunately, when you go up against the Serato, OK is simply not enough. What? Apparently this thing has two roar animations. The second roar is on the R key and is not performed in group. I like it more than the first one, but still, the Ceratosaurus wins this round in my opinion. But the spikes on their tail is not the only thing these two have in common. Actually, they have much more. Let's take a look at Ease of Tame. First, the Ceratosaurus. In order to tame one, you need to first kill some, in order to get your hands on their venomous spikes, and craft a Hemogoblin cocktail. Fit this cocktail to one of your dinos, and then let the Serato munch on your dino until it's drunk. Once the Serato is drunk, just passively feed it its preferred kibble or meat until you tame it. Higher level Ceratos might need more than one Hemogoblin cocktails before getting fully drunk. I would also suggest using a Stego, as they're a great damage sponge thanks to their relatively cheap saddles and natural damage reduction. It's a very interesting mid-diff taming method in my opinion. It's not as easy as your standard trank and feed, but it's a lot more interesting. For the Eocarcaria, you need to craft another special item. A special sort of shroom, which requires sap, rare mushrooms and flowers, oil, narcotics, blood packs and water. Once you get the shroom, you have to feed it to your desired Eocarcaria. Your carcarias are friendly, but once you feed the shroom, there's a 50-50 chance that the dino might attack you for the next 30 seconds. Feed shrooms until tamed. It's definitely an interesting method, with comparable difficulty, maybe a little bit more difficult, but with a bit less creativity. It's still good though, but I have to give the Serato the win, simply because of the long list of required items for the shrooms. Otherwise, this would have been a tie. Up next we have our first real test, speed. 
Last time we checked these guys, the Cerato crushed the competition. Thanks to its combination of good movement speed, huge stamina pool and the momentum based top speed mechanic. But we got a new test run here, so let's run this test again. From a standing start, the Cerato managed to complete the run in 9 seconds with 390 points of stamina left. If we run again the test, but this time we start with the momentum slider maxed out, the Cerato only takes 5 seconds. Truly one of the fastest moving dinos on the island. The Eocarcaria has a lot of abilities and bonuses. However, running is definitely not the strength of this dino. Now, I could have sworn this dino had 250 stamina when I first started working on this video, but there might have been an update in the meantime. Now, with 400, the Eocarcaria actually managed to finish the test in 11 seconds and had 140 stamina left. In terms of raw speed, the Eocarcaria is behind the Cerato, but it does have its own movement advantages. The Eocarcaria has a zero turning radius, which means it can turn on the spot, while the Cerato does have quite a big turning radius, especially when sprinting. On the other hand, at full speed, the Cerato smashes through both trees and rocks, making traveling a lot easier. In the end, the category is called speed, so I have to grant the Cerato the win here. Let's see if the Eocarcaria can turn it around in our next category, tankiness. When it comes to health, both the Cerato and the Eocarcaria have the exact same base health and bonus per wild level, making them basically equal. But, each one comes with their own dope mechanics to help them. First, the Ceratosaurus has the Envenom debuff. This is applied to its opponent using their secondary attack or by getting hit. This debuff will trigger after a set amount of time a healing explosion, killing all nearby friendly carnivores. This effect can be stacked, making the Envenom debuff last longer, producing more healing explosions that become more and more potent with each explosion. However, the effect cannot be stacked by a single Cerato, because they have a cooldown that doesn't wear off before the envenomed effect that they have applied is gone. This vastly improves the effectiveness of the Cerato's in battle and their survivability. Of course, this does nothing against turrets, but in long fights against dinos it can work wonders. Definitely one of my favorite mechanics out there. But now let's focus on the Eocarcaria. Now besides their regular pack leader buff, they're able to wear armor. Besides their saddle, different types of armor engrams can be researched for the Eocarcaria, including a leather helmet, a leather or metal body armor, and a metal foot armor. The foot armor engram can only be acquired by defeating guardians. But, blueprints or armor pieces can be obtained by defeating alpha Eocarcarias that are found in the wild. Just like the saddles, the armor pieces have durability, but they will provide the armor regardless of their current durability. This can take the Eocarcaria to a whole new level in terms of armor, easily having more than twice as much armor than a creature with only a saddle if we're using equipment of the same quality. There are also two extra foot armor pieces that can be equipped that I think are for comedic effect, but hey, better use those than nothing, they still provide armor. And the last thing that benefits the Eocarcaria when it comes to tankiness is its ability to sit down. When sat down, the Eocarcaria gets a health regeneration boost for the next 2 minutes, that lasts even after moving, so it can theoretically be used in battle. It's nowhere near as powerful as other heals in the game, but it's nice to have between boss fights. In the end, I have to go with the Eocarcaria on this one. The fact that you can get so much more armor on them makes it a no-brainer. It's like the Stego's natural reduction, but you have to work a bit to get to it. However, that does pay off, as you can go even higher than the Stego's 50% reduction. Next, the one that everyone loves, damage. Starting with the Ceratosaurus. With its bite, it manages 89 DPS tamed at level 1. This is an impressive value, considering it deals only 52 damage per bite, but that attack speed takes this dino to the next level. On their secondary attack, they only manage 48 DPS but this attack is required to apply the envenomed effect. Just mix it in from time to time while you're biting the target to make sure you stack the heal. Worth to note here is that the secondary attack can also be a spin attack when you aim to the side, and the primary attack can be used to turn on the spot, just like the Sarko. Now, with the Eocarcaria, things are not as straightforward. This thing has four different attacks. Look, I love dinos that have a lot of buttons but 2 roars and 4 attacks are kind of too much. 
First, the standard bite has a long animation, which means it only gets 52 DPS. The second attack is a bash, which only deals 26 DPS and drains stamina at an insane rate. I think this attack is supposed to have a knockback, but I'm not sure how well that works. The next attack is on X of all buttons, and is a headbutt. This deals 34 DPS, and it's a bit better than the bash when it comes to stamina. The last attack is a tail spin, that is actually the best when it comes to DPS, with 76, but it's a bit harder to use, since the dino moves forward when you use it. Well, even though the Eokarkaria has 4 attacks, when it comes to damage, the Serato has one that is much better than all of them. But the Eokarkaria still has a few tricks up its sleeve. First, the Alpha Boost, and second, its special Mushroom Tubes. We'll talk more about them in the next category, but in short, the Eokarkaria can craft a damage boosting Mushroom Tube that boosts its DPS by roughly 15%. Considering all of this, I'd say we can call this a draw. One point each. Okay, let's move to special abilities. We're starting off with the Serato, which has two abilities. The Momentum Gaining Sprint, which allows you to move at incredible speeds and to bulldoze through both stone and trees, and the Envenomed ability, which works as a heal ability for all carnivores nearby. This effect can be applied by either using the secondary attack or passively when you're getting hit with melee attacks. But that's about it. And that's okay. A good creature doesn't need 5 special abilities and a roar effect to be good. Now let's get back to those shrooms, shall we? The Eokarkaria has two special abilities. We've already seen the health regen boost when set down, but besides that, the Eokarkaria is a mushroom generator. Each dino will generate up to 20 red, blue, purple, green, and rare mushrooms at a time. These mushrooms can be used to craft four different mushroom tubes. One for attack, one for defense, one for health regeneration, and one for movement speed. The reason only the attack stew was mentioned up to this point is because it's the only one that could have actually affected the result. The cool thing about these stews is that they can be used on other dinos as well, making them much more useful. The speed stew gives a 20% boost for 300 seconds. The attack stew gives a 15% melee boost, but also increases damage taken by 15%, for 600 seconds. Similar, the defense 2 gives a 15% defense boost but reduces damage by 15% for 600 seconds, and the health regen 2 gives the RG healing effect for 30 seconds. Now, we could also count the 3 extra attacks as abilities, but I think the only thing left worth mentioning is the alpha boost. We're gonna call this a tie, because even though the Eokarkaria has all the stews up its sleeve, the Envenomed effect is one hell of a special ability, especially in a pack. And the last category, Utility. This is why I love mid-sized dinos. Their versatility is off the charts. They have so many utilizations. Let's start off with the Serato. The Serato is clearly intended to be the ultimate land travel theropod. Its speed and stamina are levels above competition, and with 550 base weight, you can actually use these guys to hurl cargo across the island in no time. However, I'd argue that its main use is to fight bosses. I've recently tried them against the Alpha Megapithecus, and thanks to the Envenomed effect, they came out with only about a thousand health missing. The potential for element farming is actually crazy here for a mid-sized creature. You can use them in groups to take on Gigas or Titanosaurs, they can do almost anything when it comes to fighting. I wouldn't use them against the Overseer though because they wouldn't be able to properly use their heal on it, thanks to its shields. Now, the Eokarkaria, despite being a mid-sized carnivore, it's not intended to be a day-to-day -day travel mount. It's just meh when it comes to traveling, thanks to its speed and stamina. But I think this dino is intended to be either a support dino, creating different mushroom stews to help your army in combat, or as the bulk of your force, thanks to their ability to be fully coated in armor. This can make them a decent turd soaker if you don't have any other options, and of course, they look like a very potent boss fighting dino. They have some element farming potential as well, since they can heal between fights by sitting down combined with the health regen stew. With some good armor, they're probably strong enough to take on a Giga if they're in a group. And lastly, they can be bred in order to create a massive mushroom production farm, allowing you to mass produce the stews. This is probably the hardest category to pick a winner. But I'm gonna go with the Eokarkaria for this one. 
Even though they're not great as a way of transportation, the fact that they can play both the support and the tank role in your force is enough for me to give it a win. The amount of armor that they can get is obscene compared to other creatures, especially the Serato, which at this point can get a settle better than Primitive as far as I know. Final score, 5-4 for the Ceratosaurus. Wow, it was much closer than I expected when I first saw the Eocarcaria, but the beast held its own at the end. Remember guys, these creatures are more than just these scores, and if the Eocarcaria lost in the end, it doesn't mean you should pick the Serato in every situation. The Eocarcaria can be one of the best tanks in the game, with the right armor and mushrooms too. I see the Eocarcaria as a dino that can fill the gaps in a PvP army, either as a tank or as a support unit, or that can be the bulk of your element farming army. The Serato strikes me as an assault type of dino, that packs a lot of punch in small frame and can be extremely resilient in groups, while also being a great travel and cargo mount. But let me know what's your opinion on these two. Also, keep your eyes on the community tab to vote for the next episode of the series. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you really enjoy the content and you want to support me, how about you become a channel member? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Spartacus out.